but also about how they have lost the culture of the world and the politics of the world. So we want to show you how they have Take your cross and gather outside. That would be nice. You don't need to put your cross on. I'm not going to be out of that. Oh, no, I'm so pleased. Unless you like to hear it. Let us pray. Triumphant God, who comes to us, one who seeks and serves, lead us through the events of this holy week, that we may receive Christ afresh into our lives and embody Christ's spirit into the world. Fill now our hearts with gospel joy as with anticipation we enter the sanctuary. Bless us and these branches that our very feet shall fly aloud. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Oh. We go in and follow the people. All right.
Join me in our call to worship. Sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna. Hosanna. Sing songs that are unashamed. Hosanna. Hosanna. Sing songs without being afraid. Hosanna. Hosanna. Sing for the God of tomorrow and today. Hosanna. Hosanna. Let us worship the one worthy to be praised. Let us pray. O oh God, as we have gathered on this Palm Sunday to begin this holiest of weeks, we thank you for the joy that you gave the people that day. For you came as their Messiah. And even though their ideas and thoughts of what you should be were not quite on, you still came for all. We give you glory and praise and ask that you be with us through this week, that we might be reminded of all that you have done for us, and that we might grow in our love for you, your grace, and your mercy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Let us sing and worship God today.
truly thankful that you indeed, above all, gave your life for us. That we might have your grace and your mercy and your love. God, we are so thankful. And we ask, oh God, that you would empower us that we might be able to share in this good news to all those who need you here, to all those who are struggling, all those who have that inner desire to connect with their Creator. Many don't even realize what that emptiness is. Others of God need grace living lives of guilt and regret. Oh God, help us to reach them with your grace, with your forgiveness, with an unconditional love, that they might know that the God who made them loves them, no matter where they come from, who they are, what they've done. A love that will not let them go. Lord Jesus, we are also mindful that during that horrible time of your crucifixion, that you took stripes upon your back. Scripture says, by your wounds, by your stripes, we are healed. God, we lift up those who are struggling with illness. God, we pray for the King and we pray for the Princess of Wales in their diagnosis of cancer. She will bring healing to their bodies. And to all those, of oh God, in our community who are suffering from cancer and other illnesses, we ask, O oh God, for your healing touch, for your presence to be with them. Let them know that they don't walk alone, but you are with them. For those who are struggling in times of worry and stress over relationships and family, finances, work, school, life, God, comfort them. May they know that you are ready, able, and willing to care for them, to walk with them, to hold their hand, to carry them, to embrace them, and to love them. We thank you for your great love your great goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Is that video that you have? Make sure what I have coming up next. <clears throat> All right, we're going to show a video for you. It's a few minutes long. And you're probably wondering why I'm showing you this video, because it's actually a video about Pride, and specifically the first Pride March, or Pride Parade, that was held in London back in 1972. What I want you to do as you watch it, I want you to reflect upon it, as well as what we are celebrating today. That march, that parade that Jesus did, down into Jerusalem as he rode on the back of the donkey. And think about it. What it, the first pride must have meant. What maybe your first pride march or parade meant to you. And compare that to what must have been going through the minds of Jesus and the disciples. And indeed, as we've been looking at Peter, what must have been going through Peter's mind? Let us watch and reflect. Yeah, yeah. 
this field was, was very, very challenged. Because you have to remember this was not only a first, but it was a once in a lifetime. There's only one time that you first go to a march. And not only that was the, the first gay march, it was the first ever gay march in Britain. I put on my gay liberation fund badge at Blackheath Station and caught the train to come to Charing Cross Station, walked across the Strand uh, to Trafalgar Square, and saw a couple of people carrying the gay liberation fund banner. People were dressed in such a way that you couldn't necessarily tell who was male and who was female. So we clambered onto this, uh, the stage and there were women kissing women, women kissing men, men kissing men, men kissing women on that stage in full view of the public and a lot of police officers. And we thought, Let, let's confront them and make an issue out of this. And uh, did our kiss, clambered down and started our march from Trafalgar Square. The morning of the Pride March was really exciting. And I got up. My girlfriend, Gabby Carrie, we put on our gay liberation front badges, got onto the tube, held hands, got there and joined the march. I think it was very important for those of us who felt we, we could to wear the gay liberation front badge and make it obvious that we were gay. Because so many people put married lesbians, and they started wearing the gay liberation front badge and immediately lose custody of their children. So it was very important for us who could do it to show that gay was good. Gay was angry, gay was valid, gay was not a sickness. Gay indeed perhaps showed the way forward. London Pride in 1972 was the first in the world to call itself Pride. There had been similar events in the United States, but they called themselves things like Gay Liberation Day. As I arrived, there were already on the plinth a group of Gay Liberation Front members wearing gigantic industrial waste paper bags, each inscribed with a letter of the alphabet. And when they stood together, it spelled out the words, Gay is proud. There were other banners, um, human sexuals, uh, homosexuals are nature's children, uh, gay is angry, and gay women's liberation. We had a number of slogans that we shouted as we walked along. Uh, one of them was 2468, a gay is just as good as straight, which later became 2468, is that policeman really straight? The response of the public on the pavement was very mixed. A third were quite overtly hostile. Uh, about another third were just gawking in disbelief, and then another third were actually supportive. They gave us a thumbs up, they wished us well. Then when we got to Hyde Park and we had our kissing and um, shared weed and sandwiches in the, in the, in the park and men got, um, took all their clothes off and danced and we all kissed each other. And I mean, the police just did not know what to do. Because there were so many of us, like hundreds of us doing this, they were all looked a bit uncomfortable, I thought. At the end of that first Pride, we felt, we've done it. We've done it this year, we're going to do it again next year. It's amazing to think that what began as one Pride in London in 1972, with only about 700 marches, has this year exploded into over 190 Pride events across the whole of the UK with a million people. I think it's important to recognise that GLS did start all this off. It's not really about us, it's about the movement being recognised.
extremely clever, those of you who don't know, it's a brand of condoms. Probably the one and only time you will have seen a video sponsored by condoms in church. Probably the ice So, tell me, as you watch that video and you think about Palm Sunday, what's some things that you see some similarities? Who rode in to Jerusalem and Jesus didn't hide, but not rode in, but walked in. They were out there in the open, staying with the party march. Others? How many men go for the better of other people? Say that again? How many men go for the better of other people? And then go for the better of other people? Yeah, good. Triumph of the Philly. Triumph of the Philly, yeah, that's good. Do you remember that feeling the first time you were in a pride parade? Glad of finding them. Feeling that good feeling of being there. Imagine it was probably quite like that on the first Palm Sunday. What about, uh, it said about the fact that it went from one to, was it 190? Over 190 now, even in place in the UK? Do you ever think about the spread of it? How many churches today around the world processed in, worship God, tell about Jesus? Yeah. It's been quite well, did not it? All right, as we prepare for our gospel reading, would you rise as you're able and let's sing together our breath.
sorry, from John this morning, and John hones in on that quite a bit because he's just recounted that story about Lazarus being risen from the dead. And the people are excited. There's Jesus. Here is this one who has done all of this, and they're wondering, is this him? Is he the Messiah? They've been wondering all along, is he going to show up? Because it was time for the festival of the Passover, and a lot of people were gathering in Jerusalem, and they're wondering, is Jesus going to come? Will we be able to get to see him? Will we be able to get to see him perform a miracle? Maybe raise somebody else from the dead. The excitement that was there, the expectation, the joy. And like we said, a lot of us experience some similar things along these lines when we went to our first gay, LGBT pride, trans pride, whatever event. And we celebrated. And we gave thanks for the thought that we could actually do this publicly. We rejoiced and we had joy in ourselves. Thankfulness. Even those who don't identify as LGBT plus have heard the stories or maybe been there with a friend or a loved one who experienced it for the first time. See the joy and the openness and <sighs> what must it have been like for the people that were there on Palm Sunday as Jesus rode in? But what about those who were a little concerned, worried, fearful? I mean, they knew that the Romans were in charge. What's going to happen? Because you see back there in 1972, that first pride in London, not everybody was out in the street marching and praying. There were those fearful. Many of you know the film called Pride that came out a number of years ago. And in it, most of the characters are based upon real life people, people who actually live and their story. But there's one character that they put in, and, and he's kind of a, a pivotal role. I think his actual name is Joe, if I remember correctly, but he's known as Bromley because that's where he's from. And so they kind of nicknamed him Bromley. And he's a character who's not based upon a real person, but maybe a combination of different people. But they use his story because it's his experience of he's in the closet and his parents don't know and he wants to come out and he wants to get involved. And so they kind of weave the whole film around his story of being there in the middle. I want you to watch just the first clip, of a short clip of Bromley's first time to come to a gay march. It was the march in 1984. I 
Just like many of us may have seen on the news or on shows or read or heard about, you know, coming out and being ourselves, but it took us time to do so. They, too, were afraid of what it meant to commit to Jesus. Sometimes we are like that in our faith walk. We're a little worried. What's it going to be if I really commit to Christ? What does that mean in my life if I do? The difference is you can spend your life in the closet. Or you can get out there with the crowd, with Christ, coming into town and celebrate and rejoice, singing songs of praise and worship, and not be afraid to say, I'm with him. In the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in the question that comes up later when Peter is there and, and being asked about who he is. And they ask, are you, you know, are you with him? I know you. But in John, the question is, are you one of his disciples? Not just were you with him. I saw you hanging out. But it's more poignant. Are you one of Jesus' disciples? Today and as we go through this week, let us make that new commitment. Not to just be seen in church. Not just to say, oh yeah, I was baptized. But to say, Proudly, proudly, with songs and declarations of Hosanna and praise and worship, I am one of Jesus' disciples. And let us sing the joys of that. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you that we can celebrate our faith in you. Because we know that you are always with us. The good times, the bad times, the joyous times, the difficult and sad times. We can rejoice because you are with us. 
may we, O God, not be afraid to say, we're one of yours. We follow you, Lord Jesus. Will you join with me in the time of confession? The Gospel of John tells us that crowds gathered to praise Jesus as he entered Jerusalem, singing and shouting with confidence. After describing the crowd, however, the Gospel writer zooms in on the disciples and tells us that while the crowd shouted praise at Jesus, the disciples were a bit confused. The text says, the disciples did not understand what was happening. A lot of our lives may look like this. Either we understand God's presence in our lives and want to shout it from the rooftop, or we're standing on the side of the parade, missing our chance to sing. That is why we need the prayer of confession, because life happens fast, and without a doubt, we have stood where the disciples stood. So let us pray, for we don't want to miss our chance to sing. Holy God, we want to run into the streets and sing your praise. We want to be bold and unashamed of this good news gospel. However, too often we find ourselves standing against the wall. Too often we stay quiet. Too often we let others carry the song. Forgive us for the moments when we could lead the parade, but instead find ourselves standing on the sidelines. Show us which songs are ours to sing. Show us which parades are ours to lead. Then give us the courage and conviction to do both. With hope and honesty we pray. Amen. Friends, no matter where you are on the parade route, waving palm branches through the streets or standing against the wall, quiet and cautious, Jesus marked for you. Jesus' love, his striving for justice and mercy, was for you. You are included in this story, and nothing can ever change that. So hear these words and trust them deep in your bones. We have reason to see, for Jesus Christ loved you yesterday. Jesus Christ loves you today. Jesus Christ will love you tomorrow. You are forgiven, claimed, and sent to serve. Go out and sing. Go out trusting these words. Amen. As we come to this table to receive these gifts that remind us of the body of Christ that was broken and crucified for us, and the blood that was shed there for our sins. May we rejoice and sing songs of praise because of the redemption that we have. On the night that Jesus was betrayed and handed over and was tried and crucified, he took from the table the bread that was there, and he gave thanks to God for it, and he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took from the table the cup. He gave thanks to God for it and blessed it, and said, take and drink of this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. Let us pray. O 
Oh God, we ask your blessings upon these elements that they might become for each of us your body and your blood. Reminders of your grace through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen. Let us declare and affirm our faith together. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who rode through the streets of Jerusalem on a donkey. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who challenged Rome's oppressive power with peaceful protests. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who was surrounded by crowds of dreamers and believers. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, so even today, we will sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Friends, the table of God is spread for the people of God. Come, and let us feast together.
This Thursday, we will have a Monday Thursday service at 7 p.m. on Thursday evening. I meant to mention that the hymn that we sung at the end of communion, Come Thou Found, I mentioned this before. And I don't know if you guys have picked up the words in the hymn or the themes that we've been doing every week. So if you pay attention to the hymn, you'll, you'll see the phrases. And on Monday Thursday, it's Streams of Mercy when we look at the mercy of Christ and talk about how uh, Jesus washed the disciples' feet and gave mercy, even though he knew that Peter was going to deny him, he knew that Judas was going to betray him, the streams of mercy. Then on Good Friday, we'll have a service on, uh, at 11 a.m. in the morning, and that is prone to lead the God I love. If we recall how Peter denied Christ, even though he loved God, Felt kind of trapped and felt like he should leave and deny Christ. And then, of course, Easter Sunday, we will be celebrating, and I hope the hope that we have because of the resurrection. And also, uh, Kevin Teresa will be again leading a Holy Saturday uh, hike, and so you'll want to join us with that and participate in one more information. So you guys will be glad to share that with you. All right. Would you rise as you are able for our benediction and our closing now? Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, May you hear God's voice deep within, saying, Take heart, it is I, be not afraid. You are called, ye are blessed, in both your ups and your downs. You always belong to God. Go now in peace. Go, trusting that good news. Amen. Thank you.
Oh.